Welcome to part three of our video series, the Genesis 3-5 project. So far, we've shown that the godhood lie of Genesis 3-5 has infiltrated the church and other religions. Today, we're going to show how the godhood lie from Genesis 3-5 has a um, self-centered effect on people today. If you notice, self is a major player in this godhood lie that ye shall be as gods. It's because of self that we're in the condition we are in today. Eve was thinking of herself when Satan said to her, you shall not surely die, but you will be as gods. Eve took her thoughts and her mind off of her creator and put it on herself. Self-esteem, self-focus was birthed at that moment on planet Earth in the human heart. When Adam took of the fruit and ate, he also was thinking of himself and not of his creator. He loved his wife so much that selfishly he obeyed her. Instead of being the leader that God called him to be and created him to be, he succumbed to temptation via his wife. This is the unfortunate result of self, that ye shall be as gods. And uh, we're going to take a look at a couple of clips today, and we're going to show that pride and self has so permeated the human condition that you can't escape it. This is the selfie generation. Um, listen to this scripture. Second Timothy 3.1 This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. My friends, what we're seeing is a fulfillment of this very passage. We're living in these days. Self ha has reigned over the, the human heart. We, as human beings, have put ourselves in the place of God in our own lives, as if we created ourselves. And what you're going to see is the exact the fulfillment of this scripture that we just read. Self is a fruit, a product of the Genesis 3-5 lie. Please watch through the lens of scripture. God bless. I think your true legacy, the, the real work that you've done on the planet, will be teaching people how to live authentically as themselves. That will be your real work. It's a very hard thing when society doesn't understand you and you get very clear images that you're not loved by everyone. When people come out, they're literally they're literally coming out to save their lives. They're coming out to make a break for freedom, for authenticity, and it's, it really is an example for all of us about leading authentic lives. Once I found out what emotionally it meant to be transgender, I that was it. I was like, this is my ticket. This is the piece. I had no idea because I didn't even know it existed. Right. That would and, it, and you feel more in, in true to yourself right now. Oh yes, I feel like today, sitting with you right now, I'm at my most authentic self than I've ever been yeah. in my whole life. And it, well, that's all that matters. Yeah, definitely. How nervous were you? Uh, I'm the most nervous I've ever been in my life, mm -hmm. for sure. I think my biggest fear of doing it was even just having a panic attack, quite frankly. Uh huh. Um, but. You know, I was just so ready to do it and quite frankly so excited to do it. There's nothing better than to wake up in the morning and be able to be your authentic self. Yes, 
Um, that I think I think everyone can relate to that, whether you understand this or not. Yes. Everyone wants to feel free. Everyone wants to feel good in their own skin. Just before you launched your your CD, you came out, which yes. could have been a catastrophe. It could have been like you're just known for that, and it yeah. would have overshadowed. Your... Well, it kind of felt like I just had to mention it before I released my record, just right. so people knew that the record was who what who it was about. Mm -hmm. um, and. It felt like a brave thing to do as well. I Did think. you write the book with the intention that, okay, it's time for me to come out, or were you writing about something else and that was just along the way? I had no idea what was going to happen. When you sit in front of the computer and then you start adding and then you delete and then you add and then you delete and a very important, a very, very important part of the puzzle is missing. You were, I think, if I'm not wrong, like if not the fastest, one of the fastest um, women swimmers. Now you're swimming on the men's team. I'm not winning anything like I used to, and that's definitely humbling. For example, in my last meet, I got 16th place, which obviously is not first place. <laughs> um, but the whole team was on the side of the deck, and they, and they jumped up and were screaming for me. I was ecstatic, and it was as much glory as I ever would have gotten in first place. Probably more, because I was myself. That's yeah, that's amazing. If you'd have said to me 10 years ago, I'd be sitting on your show, uh, married to the man I love, and have two beautiful children, I said you'd have put acid in my drink. Um, <laughs> As much as we've done with laws and ending don't ask, don't tell, etc., changing hearts and minds, uh, I, I don't think anybody's been more influential than you on that. I really mean that. That's true. That's true. It's just about being uh, understanding and showing up fully present and being grateful for, for what I'm experiencing. And I find that that draws more, um, even things that I'm not aware that I necessarily want. But I find that when I do the spiritual work for me, my meditation and my quiet time, and I put me on my schedule and I make me the priority, and not in a selfish way, but uh, in a selfish way, <laughs> yeah. that, that I, I find that the gratitude brings about more opportunity and more... So that's for working for you. That you're, is you're, definitely working for me. You have an active spiritual practice. Yes, because I tried the pain, and that didn't work for me so much. Yeah, and self-nurturing is not selfish. Okay. I mean, you need to think about those things. I think that's a good way to term it, that yeah. would make people easy with it. Yeah. Self-nurturing. Yeah, and I want to add one thing, because this is critical. It may be the most important thing, I think, on this entire list. Number 14. Winners deal with the truth. So much of what we do in life and the problems we have and the, and, and, and the issues we have with not getting what we want has to do with worthiness, a sense that we're not worthy of the happiness we desire. We're not worthy of the relationship we desire, the job we desire, the money. It's not that we have to establish a great sense of worthiness because our worthiness has already been established for us. Our worthiness has been established for us by the universe. It's our job to recognize that worthiness. And the best way to do that is through consistent self-love practices. I hope that these self-care practices can do for you what they've done for me, which is allow me to really know myself deeply and love who I discover. One of my- Us to feel good about ourselves right now today. And I wanna share some of those things with you, okay? So, the first thing that we can do to feel good about ourselves is we can spend time with people who make us feel good. This is me and Julie when I very first met her. Find your Julie and spend time with her or him. The second thing is that we can turn up the volume on our positive thinking, right? We can build up those thoughts about ourselves that are good and we can delete the negative thoughts. Just press delete. The third thing, start to tell the people around you, maybe the people around you today, start to tell them what you see about them that you like. Help them jumpstart their own positive thinking. And the last thing is, when you receive a compliment, when we receive compliments, let's stand our ground, let's look them in the eye, and let's just say, thank you. Let's create a new culture. A culture where we all get to grow up feeling good about ourselves. A culture where we can rewrite our histories, we can create new stories about ourselves. I will start. I'm 11, and I like these legs because someday they're gonna help me run marathons.
I'm 15, and I am proud of my mom for getting herself sober and for making a better life for us. I'm 17, and I know that nobody is perfect. I'm 21, and I think I'm just as successful as my friends. I'm 37, and now this is my story. I invite you today. I invite you to do two things with me. First, be Julie for someone. Invite him or her to meet themselves because it might change their lives. On this show, this is what I've been trying to do. It is the secret to creating the life you truly want. Make more money, lose weight, fall in love, land your dream job. Isn't that amazing? This is life changing. I'm ready for that, yeah. Okay, now the choir's going. Jump in, anybody. Find out the secret and see why people everywhere are talking about it. When, when I heard it. that for the first time, my eyes watered. The next. Have you heard about it? This is the secret. In the past few months, talk about this DVD has been spreading around the world. We've heard from people in Europe, in Canada, all the way down under in Australia. I have to tell you, in one day, six people told me about this DVD. I mean, and I hadn't heard about it when the first person told me. By the time the sixth person told me, I go, okay, I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna watch it tonight. My guests today believe that once you discover the secret, that you can immediately start creating the life you want, whether it's getting out of debt, whether it's finding a more fulfilling job, even falling in love. They say you can have it all, and in fact, you already hold the power to make that happen. Here's how a woman from Australia stumbled upon what she calls the secret. I discovered the secret towards the end of 2004. And it was truly the worst time of my life. Everything in my life, just emotionally, physically, financially, everything had fallen apart. My father died suddenly. My mother was just completely grief-stricken. She really didn't want to live. I felt so powerless to help her. I wept and wept and wept. And I didn't want my daughter to see me sobbing. I was just in total despair. And she asked me what was wrong, and I said this, and this, and this, and she just said, oh, it'll be okay. And then she got a book, and she said, here you are, Mum, read this. That book was The Science of Getting Rich, written by Wallace Wattles in 1910. Something inside of me had me turn the pages one by one, and I can still remember my tears hitting the pages as I was reading it. It gave me a glimpse of the secret. It was like a flame lit inside of my heart. And with every day since, it's just become a raging fire of wanting to share all of this with the world. I read hundreds of books. I listened to hundreds of hours of audio. I was on the internet in two and a half weeks. I had traced the secret back through history. Since I discovered the secret, every single moment of my entire life has changed and I am living my life for the first time. Which is so fascinating because when I watched The Secret, I realized I've always lived by The Secret. I didn't know it was a secret. <laughs> I didn't know it was a secret. Why do you call it The Secret? We really needed to contain the contain the knowledge in, in a couple of words. And the secret is the law of attraction. Okay, so what do you mean by that? The law of attraction I would describe as the most powerful law in the universe. And it is the law by which we are creating our lives. So whether we realize it or not, the law of attraction is working all of the time. Now, clearly, if you don't know what the law does, then, uh, then you can't, you may not be creating the life you want. Law of attraction says that like attracts like. And what we do is we attract into our lives the things that we want. And that is based on what we're thinking and feeling. Okay. It's not the other way around. So what you're saying is, is that we all, yes. human beings here on earth, Yes. create our own reality we do we create our own circumstances yes. we create our own circumstances by the choices that we make yeah. and the choices that we make are fueled by our thoughts so our thoughts are the most powerful thing that we have they here are. on earth they and are. based upon what we think and we think determines who we are 
we attract who we are into our lives. That's yes. what you're saying. That's exactly right. That